Alright, so I have another video for you guys. And this one is for a CPU cooler called the Phononic, Phononic Hex 2.0. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, and what makes this CPU cooler special is that it is a tech cooler built into a tower cooler. So for those that don't know, tech is thermal electric cooler. We're going to go through the unboxing here real quick. We have a manual, manual. Um, this CPU cooler does support AM2, AM3, um, all the Intel 1150 series and uh, 2011. So we have all the mounting hardware in here. So you have your thermal paste, big Allen key with the Phillips on it, some standoffs, bolts, back plate, um, and then some more plates. And this one is this. These cables are actually the USB cable because this has customizable um, LEDs and you can manage fan speeds and temperature um, settings uh, via software and it has a fan connector for the built-in fan. So that's out of the way, you can actually look at the cooler. Um, so this cooler, like I said, uses a tech. So essentially what it is, is a tower cooler with a tech on the bottom and then a 12 volt connector actually uses a six pin for the power for the tack. There you have it. All right, so we have our cooler here. And so it's 125 millimeters tall and 100 and about 110 millimeters wide. You have your four pin fan connector and 12 pin. The 12 pin powers the tech cooler, which is on the bottom here, which is this wire right here goes to the tech cooler. And we also have a USB connection. Now the USB connection is optional. So essentially what this is, is a tower cooler built on top of a tech powered by a six pin power delivery switch programmed for temperatures. So essentially you have a thermostat, um, a thermometer rather, and the, the tech turns on and off depending on whatever temperature you set it to. Phonetic, the company that makes this, I hope I'm saying that right, um, says that it competes with leading AIO coolers to quote their website. So I'm gonna put up this up against the Corsair H150i Pro, which is a 300 millimeter all-in-one cooler. And we'll see how it does. Um, now, if we open this up, we get to see the fan. This is a 92 millimeter fan. And the specifications say this has 3.1 H H2O mm of pressure. So to give you an idea, the Noctua fan is somewhere around uh, 2 point something, low 2 point uh, O's. And so if we were to believe the specs, this thing should be pretty good. We'll see how that goes. Made by Sayodeki. So it's a 12 volt. 1 point or 0.17 amp fan and in here you can actually see the power switching that I was talking about essentially it's a thermo a therm thermometer hooked up to a 12 volt turns on and off depending on the setting of the thermometer and then it's also connected to the fan the fan gets its power from there and I've cut myself on these fins. They are quite sharp. So let's put this back in here. Uh, 
according to phonetic, phononic, phononic, this cooler should actually, it says it competes with leading all-in-one cooling. I have a Corsair H150i Pro that's uh, it's a 360 millimeter all-in-one. And we'll see how this stacks up against that. And we're going to be running it on the uh, X79 Xeon I have, which is a 6-core. Stay tuned for that. Okay, so I've been running the Corsair H150i Pro, which is the 360 millimeter all-in-one on this CPU, running IDA 64 stress test for about 27 minutes. And we're sitting, the temperatures right here, the current ones, max temperatures are here. So we're looking at anywhere between low 70s to high 70s, even hitting maximum in the mid 80 C range. So now we're gonna put on the Phenonic Hex 2.0 CPU cooler and we're gonna see how it goes. So I just got done running the Phenonic Hex 2.0 on the Xeon platform here. And actually, uh, when I just put this on there, you know, plug, plugged in the uh, PCIe, plugged everything in, put it on there from taking off the Corsair cooler, um, actually throttled almost instantly uh, under a stress test under IDA64. So then I downloaded the application from Anonyx website. And actually, you don't have to install anything. You just download a zip file, extract it, run the application, and that is the application. There is no install procedure. And there's actually settings for the TAC. So I turned it all the way up, and then began running the stress test again. And it only lasted about 30 minutes, and I thought it was good, so I walked away, came back about 20 minutes later and actually the computer blue screened which does not happen with the Corsair cooler. Um, this is a cooler I run on this CPU all the time. It's the same overclock on the Corsair as I did on this one. It runs perfectly fine on the Corsair. So it can't cool as much as a 360 millimeter all-in-one. Though truthfully for its size it's still very impressive. Um, so what I was looking at before, uh, IDA64 crashed on this overclocked Xeon here, the 6 core, uh, was in the 80s. So it wasn't throttling at all. So it was actually doing a really good job for its size. Uh, it did make a little bit of noise, but I found it way more tolerable than the three um, static, high static pressure fans I have on the Corsair. So it's actually pretty, pretty good. Um, for the cost, for the size, it's actually really nice. Now, some things, one, is that if you have the tech on, like I did doing the stress test, which I had to have on, um, otherwise the CPU cooler just wasn't cooling down the CPU, it just instantly throttled. There will pretty much always be hot air coming out of one side of the cooler. Um, that's just the nature of a tech cooler, um, because the the tech cooler, one side's hot, one side's cold. So you have to cool off the hot side to make the cold side colder. So there's pretty much always going to be hot air coming out of one side. Um, now that's okay if you have it exhausting out of your case. 
But what I found here was no matter what position I put it in, it was either blowing on the memory, it was blowing on the VRM, it was blowing on the ba the back of the GPU. But in a case, maybe you don't have tall memory, only memory slots on one side of the CPU. If you put an exhaust fan on one side, it's totally a non-issue. Um, another thing is this, L this logo here is actually LED, it's RGB, and you can customize it, but you can customize it. There's various colors, but you can't really see it. I had it mounted this way, so you can't see it at all. And even if you mounted it this way, it's not very bright. And this would be the most visible part, and you still can't see it that well. So, while it's nice to have RGB, and it's, I guess, a selling point marketing, um, don't get this if you want an RGB cooler. Um, and honestly, this little of a RGB, it's, I almost don't want them to even put it on there. Like, what's the real point? Um, but with all that being said, it is a nicely made product. It's probably the only tech cooler um, on the market right now. And it's very well made, very well implemented. There's firmware in here. The software is nice, although limited. And it's a good cooler. Uh, for its size, it's perfect for smaller builds. Especially if you have like an i7 in a smaller build or an AMD CPU in a smaller build. You're not going to get super awesome overclocks with this, so this isn't something you can slap on a CPU and overclock it to the sky. Yeah, you're just, that's not going to happen. You're looking at probably equivalent to a 240 to a 120 millimeter all-in-one with decent fans. This is, I paid $87 plus shipping from Amazon for this, so about $100. And most of the 360 millimeter all-in-ones, like the Corsair here, are a little bit above that, 120, 150, or more. So you're actually getting a lot in this cooler. Um, it's a very nice finished product. It looks nice. It looks professional. It's not something someone slapped together in their garage. Another thing I don't really like is you have all these cables coming from it. So we have our PCIe cable that we have to deal with. So we have to deal with all these cables here. Um, yeah, that's not nice. Um, but one thing is, if you plug in the USB cable and you use the program and you set your, your settings that you want, your LED color and how you want the tech to behave, you can actually just unplug the USB and just leave it unplugged. It will keep those settings. That being said, it is kind of still obnoxious to have to do a PCI Express cable. These fins, they don't look sharp, but I actually cut myself taking it out of the package. Uh, it's probably earlier in this video, um, so just be careful. Mounting is a bit of a pain as well because you can't actually get in there. You have to use thumb screws to mount it to the motherboard and you just have to use your fingers which it seems to get perfectly tight enough I couldn't tighten the screws anymore it seems good enough but it's definitely very awkward I had to take the memory out and uh, at one point I had to use um, tweezers to put the nut on top just because everything was in the way you just can't get the, the nut on the screw but overall this is a good product I think um, it probably performs on par with the Noctua, something like that, uh, like the D, D16, the big giant Noctua, with the two fans, or the three fans. But this is a lot smaller, it's a lot, way smaller. But for that size, you pay with, with wires. Uh, so this has been the Phono, Phononic, still can't get that name right, Phon Phononic. Uh, Hex 2.0. Thank you for watching.